The Grand Cham by Harold Lamb Chapter 1 The Gate of Shadows It was was evening on the plain of Angora in the year of our Lord, 1394. The sun was a glimmering ball of red, peering through a haze of dust at the caravan of Bayezid the Great, surnamed the Thunderbolt, Sultan of the Osmanli and Seljuk Turks, Master of the Caliphate, and Overlord of the Mamelukes of Egypt. Bayezid reined in his white Arab. We will sleep the night here, he announced, for this is an auspicious spot. At Angora a decade ago, as leader of the hard-fighting Osmanlis, Bayezid had won his first pitched battle. He had been acclaimed sultan and straightway had slain his brother with his own hand. From that moment, fate had been kind to the man called the Thunderbolt. To hear is to obey, cried his followers. Hail to the mighty, the merciful, the all-dispensing one. Bayezid glanced around through the dust haze and saw the quivering shapes of silk pavilions rising from the baked clay floor of the plateau as his camp followers scurried about. A line of grunting baggage camels stalked into the nest of tents that marked the quarters of his grandees. Attended by Negro slaves, the several litters of his women halted beside the cunates that separated his household from the small army that attended him. A slow smile crossed his broad, swart face. A powerful hand caressed the pearls at the throat of his tunic. Fate had indeed exalted him. He had been called the spiritual effigy of the formerly great caliphs of Damascus and Baghdad. He knew himself to be the supreme monarch of Asia, and in that age the courts of Asia were the rendezvous of the world. True, on the outskirts of the Sultan's empire, to the east was Tamerlane the Tatar and his horde. But had not Tamerlane said that Bayezid, given the men to follow him, was the wisest of living generals? As for Europe, Bayezid had advanced the border of his empire into Hungary. Constantinople, glittering with the last splendor of the Byzantines, was tottering. Venice and Genoa paid tribute for permission to use the trade routes into the Orient. Bayezid glanced curiously at the group of Frankish slaves whose duty it was to run beside his horse. They were panting, and sweat streaked the sand that coated their blackened faces. Fragments of cloth were wrapped about their bleeding feet. Five of the six captives bent their heads in the salam that had been taught them. The sixth remained erect, meeting the sultan's eye. 